this is still an awesome life. There's still a lot of awesome shit to do. And don't think that you don't have opportunity. Consistency will knock the shit out of motivation every time. It's nice to have someone say that you're great or whatever, but like, to be totally honest, it never really matters to me. I'm not great, I just work really hard. I just hang on, I, I don't give up. Something I wanted to mention here is I hear people talking about how they have a hard time with consistency and sometimes they have a hard time with motivation. A good way to handle motivation is to eliminate it as a factor. Sometimes the greatest decision you can make is no decision. Sometimes the easiest thing to do when you struggle with something is to abstain from it. You have a drug addiction, you have a sex addiction, you have a food addiction. Fasting, not allowing yourself to make any choices, eliminates a lot of the confusion and struggle and poor decision-making skills that you tend to make each and every day with your food because you're fatigued, you're stressed, and so on. The same thing is true with motivation. If we just don't really worry about how motivated we are and we just go and do, then that, that kind of settles that. You're already in it. You're already on it. You're already after it. You're already going, right? Now, how do, how do you get someone to do that? That's the tough part. But it ain't that hard because I got advices for you. Here's what I would do. Here's what I would suggest. Things need to have a very strong, you always need a strong foundation. And if you have a strong foundation, that's always something you can pivot back off of again. If you don't have something strong, you got something wobbly, uh, it's not gonna its not gonna really work in the long term. It could work in the short term, which is cool because it can get you momentum towards your goals, but we need stuff that's gonna really work in the long term. And what's gonna work in the long term is to just have a schedule try to have a schedule even if you don't feel like that you're not let's just say you don't feel like you're an organized person let me just share something with you guys about that I don't feel like I'm an organized person but I'm a lot more organized today than I've ever been in my life and some people may identify me as not being very organized but if you had to do the shit that I did in a day, your motherfucking head would be spinning too. <laughs> and look, I'm not complaining. This is stuff that I choose to do, right? <clears throat> changing your dialogue is really important and changing the message you give yourself. So if you don't feel like you're an organized person, that's okay. It's okay to identify that as a weakness, but that doesn't mean that you can't learn it. And that doesn't mean that we can't get on a schedule. And that doesn't mean that we can't get on point. And that doesn't mean we can't build consistency. Because consistency will knock the shit out of motivation every time. It will knock the shit out of motivation every time. If we can build consistency, we ain't got to worry about how fired up we are to go do something. You can be in a good mood. You can be in a bad mood. You can be in a sad mood. You can be in a shit mood. You can find out the worst thing and you will just shrug it off and be like, this is what I'm doing. That's the way I handle my workouts is I just schedule them. We're doing this. And like, they're not scheduled like weeks out. You know, for some of you, you may want to try to, you know, have a specific routine. I don't really love routine, but I do flourish on it. I'll admit that. And I think that's probably true with everybody. Everyone probably, you know, there's a reason why the military works the way that it does. and Why they're able to produce leaders the way that they are because there's a routine involved and people respond really well to routine. Look at how broken a lot of the people are that go into the military and look how strong they are sometimes when they come out. And we all admire that, right? What did they do that's special? They exercised really hard, right? They got on a schedule and we're all, we're all you know, amazed at the discipline. And like, man, how do they stay so motivated? It's not, there's no motivation. It's a schedule. It's a routine. We're doing this and then we're doing that. 
I have never experienced military training. I have never experienced what it would be like, but I can only imagine. Everybody kind of knows what their schedule is. If you're having a hard time with consistency with your training, write down when you want to train. The day before, 24 hours ahead of time. So whenever you're done with your last training session, whenever you're done with your last training session, if you, if you finish a training session at 4 p.m. and you're like, you know what, I'd really love to train tomorrow morning. I'd love to train at like six and see what that feels like. Write it down. None of this maybe bullshit. None of this, hey, you know what, if I'm feeling it, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go give it hell. None of that shit. That is bullshit. Understand that myself and many other, you know, quote unquote, fitness professionals, fitness, fitness gurus, or whatever you wanna call people, understand that we hate it sometimes too and we don't wanna do it sometimes too. We love it, and I realize, look, there's other, there's way worse things to cry about in this world than going in and doing a hard training session, so I'm not trying to be a bitch about it. I'm not trying to be a baby about it. I'm very grateful for the life that I have, and I'm very grateful that we have the freedom in this country where I can go, I can go play weightlifter for the day. I can go play powerlifter for the day. I can go, you know, exercise and pretend to be a bodybuilder or whatever, right? Like, what did it... What an amazing, I mean, that's something that you should all realize, right? Like, you hear people talking a lot about gratitude. Well, I'm very grateful. I have a lot of gratitude towards that fact. Everyone's life is a little different. People have different, uh, people have different amounts of money and different things like that, but this is still an awesome life. There's still a lot of awesome shit to do. And don't think that you don't have opportunity. You have many of the same exact opportunities that I have or anybody else. It always seems like The Rock is on cloud nine, right? It seems like he has so much, right? But what does he have? He probably has great people around him. It seems like he has a great significant other. It seems like he has a great family. It seems like he has a great job. We all have the same exact right towards happiness as The Rock does. We all, we all possess the ability to be just as happy as him. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Are you downloading this shit? Are you on page 43? Because that's the page that you need to be on. Why? Because I've said so. We're on page 43. That's the page that we're on. That's the page we're always on. We're never on any other page. Because we gotta be on the same page, class. Guys, write it down. Write shit down. Write shit shit down. I don't like to write stuff down, but I respond really well to it. How do you make yourself accountable? Find a training partner and text them. Say 4 a.m. That just means see you tomorrow at 4 a.m. You have to be there at 4 a.m. And what happens when you miss? The guy calls you a chump. The guy's like, dude, what's all this 4 a.m. talk? You know, if you want to get on point, you want to get on schedule, then create a schedule, write one down. Why would you miss an 11 a.m. workout if you planned your day around it? Like what, that, what a stupid thing that is, right? But everyone's always looking for their pre-workout to do something great for them. And what about the pre-workout that happens on your own? The food that you ingest, the planning that you do. Think about how empowering this is, you know? I think everyone's always just waiting for somebody to do something for them. I think a lot of people are waiting, and I, I'm guilty. This is the only reason why I'm ever able to speak on any of this stuff, so please don't ever think that I'm some pompous asshole. Um, I only know how to speak on things because I am a failure. I am the biggest failure you will ever meet. I have messed up many times. Uh, my mindset has been broken and poor, and I've made bad decisions. I've done bad things to, bad, to people. I'm never going to claim to be special. But I am proud. I'm proud of the things that I've worked on. I'm proud of the things that I've worked towards. Think about how pow empowering this is, though, right? I can say something to you, right? All right? We could meet, and I could say, Hey, man, dude, you look like... You look like you can lift a house, you know, and, and maybe that uplifts you and you get excited because you've been training really hard for a long time, right? Sometimes things like that, they last a, a while. And sometimes 
from the right person. And then this happens to me still this day. I get a compliment from somebody I admire. It feels great. You know, it feels great when somebody tells you you look good or it's a good feeling, right? Somebody says, wow, I can't believe you. Looks like you've lost about 20 pounds. You've been losing weight. And you're like, yeah, actually I did. I lost about 18 pounds. Things are going really good. I'm feeling really good. Or a friend of mine shared with me more recently, he thought he grew up thinking that he was ugly. <laughs> what a horrible thing to do, right? What a horrible thing to put on yourself. He thought he was ugly. He had like vanity issues. And one day, a girl said, hey, me and a bunch of my friends think you look like so-and-so. It was a famous actor. And they said, you're, you, you, we think you're really cute. And he was floored by that. And he was just so excited by that, that helped build momentum really for the rest of his life. What changed though when that person said that? What changed? Nothing changed. Nothing changed, right? Like everything changed because he made changes because his, his dialogue in his head, his mindset shifted. He couldn't believe that somebody that somebody said that to him. But isn't that crazy? Like nothing actually changed, nothing physical changed. He didn't do anything different. It's, it's your own inner speaking to yourself, the way that you treat yourself. And I think we are really rude and disgusting to ourselves. We say a lot of mean shit to ourselves. We put ourselves down a lot, which I actually think putting yourself down here and there is actually effective. Telling yourself you're too fat, telling yourself you're too skinny, telling yourself that you want to make you, telling yourself things that you have control over and that you're going to do something about it. I think that's healthy. But I always also say never kick the down opponent. Never kick a downed opponent. Someone's down, you never kick them. Let's say you have somebody that's out of shape. Let's say you have somebody that can only perform, they can only do one push-up. They make a decision one day. They say, you know what? Look themselves in the mirror. They say, self, you know what? You're out of shape. And you really haven't, let's not feel bad about it. Because if we're being honest about it, you haven't done anything about it. Right? It would be like if I went to go play baseball one day and I struck out a bunch of times and I was really, really frustrated that I struck out. Well, when's the last time I played baseball? How much have I been working on that? I haven't been working on it, so I shouldn't be frustrated about it. If you really haven't been working on trying to be less fatterist, then you shouldn't be sad about being fat. I'm not saying you should be proud about it either. But you shouldn't be sad about it. You should plan a, an attack about it. If a person is out of shape and they make a decision to go to the gym and they can only do one push-up and then a couple little, you know, a couple days go by, they hit the gym again. Boom, they hit the gym again, they hit the gym again. They're like, man, I had to try those push-ups. I really suck at those push-ups. Now they can do two push-ups. Now they can do three push-ups. Now they can do five push-ups. That'll be the most empowering thing that probably ever happens to some people because you wanna know why? Because some people never get one pat on the back their entire life. It's nice to have someone say that you're great or whatever, but like, to be totally honest, it never really matters to me. I always think it's kind of weird. You're great. Like, what? Well, I'm not, what am I great for? Like, that's, that's a weird thing to say. I'm not great, I just work really hard. I just hang on, I, I don't give up. And a lot of it has to do with my upbringing. I say this every day. I have two awesome parents. I have an awesome brother. I grew up with two awesome brothers. One died. My oldest brother, he, he died. He, you know, he was addicted to drugs. He was addicted to alcohol. He was addicted to all kinds of crazy stuff. But I think the most dangerous thing that he was addicted to is addicted to all the wrong shit. He couldn't figure out a way to be happy, even though he was famous, even though he uh, was a professional wrestler. He got in the ring with The Undertaker, with Bret Hart. He got in the ring with just about every single top level guy from that era you could think of. He was a Division I football player. He did all kinds of cool stuff, but he couldn't find the thing that eludes so many. He 
couldn't find that inner peace because he couldn't earn self-respect because he knew he was making mistakes and he felt like he had no control over a lot of them. You're not alone in feeling that way. There's millions of people that feel that way. And I cannot think of one other way that you can fix that without going in the gym and lifting some weights because you're not going to get that in a boardroom. You're not going to get that at work. You're not going to get that from selling insurance. You're not going to get that from selling advertising. You're not going to get that from Instagram. You're not going to get that from Facebook. You're not going to get that from social media, period. You're not going to get that from YouTube. You need in real life hugs and in real life smooches and in real life hands being put together for you. And for some of you that don't feel like you have got one person in your corner that does shit for you, we're almost always all fortunate to have like one person. There's always like one mentor in there. I'm a believer, a believer that everyone ends up with one, even when they have the people that they want to love them, don't love them, they end up in somebody's hands that do love them enough. So you got that one person, so you got that one reason to kind of hang on. Hang on for yourself, hang on for at least that one person. You can make yourself proud, and by making yourself proud, it'll be the most powerful thing that you ever do. You're not trying to compare yourself to other people, you can try to compare yourself to your former self and not comparing yourself to where people are right now. It's This is you versus you. As Elliot Holt says, the war has begun. It certainly has. And it's a war against yourself every single day. Because if we can gain self-respect and we can earn self-respect, self-respect has to be earned. It's not something that's ever gonna be given out. If you go to the gym and when you started on day one, you could only do one push up and now you can do 10, you earn that. And that's not anything that can be outsourced. It can't be handed to you. It can't be purchased. It can't be bought. I mean, dreams are dreams, but goals are different. Goals are things that you, you know are gonna happen, that you know you're capable of. And you wanna know what? There's no reason to be overly concerned or worried about them because they're gonna happen because everything that you need is inside of you already to get you there. You're already there. And some of the things that you've accomplished, maybe you're not that proud of some of them, but I bet you there's a bunch of stuff that you are pretty proud of. Lean on your strengths. Everyone's always talking about working on your weaknesses. What about working on your strengths and amplifying those, doubling and tripling down on those? And when you are able to build momentum, you're gonna recognize this. You're gonna recognize and understand that people that are put in places to run things or be in charge of things, are, they're not any smarter than you, they're not any different than you. They're probably dumber than you. The only way to grow is to go through shit that's hard and shit that's difficult. And you're gonna go through hard shit anyway in your day to day. You're gonna go through tough shit in your day, day to day stuff anyway, regardless of what you do or how you do it. There's going to be good things, there's going to be bad things. You're going to go through all kinds of stuff in your life. 